Okay, we should be live. All right. Clerk Moscow, are you ready? Ready, sir. All right. So here we go. At this time, I'll call to order the regular scheduled committee meeting for the Village of Midlothian, uh, Wednesday, November 18th at 7 p.m. or 2020 at 7 p.m. And roll call, please, Clerk Moscow. Trustee Kamey? Here. Trustee Crowley? Yeah. <laughs> Trusty Gillis? Yeah. Trusty Ivan? Uh, not here. Not no. Here. No. Okay. Trusty Kelly? Here. Trusty Christ? Here. Mayor Lura? Here. You have a quorum. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, at this time, I declare that an in person meeting is not practical or prudent because of the coronavirus pandemic. Aaron, I can confirm you have a quorum verified by audio or visual confirmation. Thank you, sir. Uh, Deputy Clerk Clacky, was there any comment from the public? No, there was none. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, on tonight's consent agenda, we have uh, approval of the September, se September 2nd, 2020 committee meeting minutes. We have uh, number two, the approval of September 9, 2020 board meeting minutes. Approval of the September 16th, 2020 committee meeting minutes. Approval of the September 23rd, 2020 board meeting minutes. And approval of the list of bills. Is there any item any trustee would like off of tonight's consent agenda? Hearing no dissension, I'm looking for a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Clerk Moscow. Trustee Christ. Aye. Trustee Cavey? Aye. Trustee Crowley? Aye. Trustee Gillis? Aye. Trustee Killily? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you all. Uh, moving on to trustee business, Trustee Christ. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I I wanted to bring something up tonight for discussion that I've kind of been mulling over. And just get everybody's thought on it and see if it, it's something the board should possibly consider. Um, in light of the fact that hopefully we'll be getting $366,000, I think that was it, from three sixty six dollars plus the additional 12000 from the county through the CARES Act. And then we can sub submit additional expenses through FEMA. I believe that deadline is until January 31st. Um, they're, they're more restrictive than the county is with the CARES Act funding, but nonetheless, we should be eligible for some uh, public safety overtime dollars and some other items. I was wondering if we should try to consider possibly a reduction in the liquor licenses for the businesses. Um, I, I'm not quite sure how we would do it. <coughs> Um, but I know many businesses are struggling unless somebody has another idea for something we could do to kind of let the businesses know um, that we're there to support them. I, I think a number of them still are ultimately going to close. So does anybody have any thoughts or a, another alternative that we could possibly offer? How about a discount on a liquor or our business license and not just for those who have liquor involved with your business yeah there are a lot of businesses that don't have liquor licenses right well i mean obviously every little bit helps but i've been looking at what a lot of communities are doing in different areas and you know giving them a one-time discount of a couple hundred dollars is that really going to make a difference for their long term? Um, my suggestion would be coming up with some innovative ways to help our businesses get more customers and be able to um, you know, sell more goods. That you know, 
maybe some sort of program or some sort of, you know, we could sponsor some sort of, you know, discount card where they would get more residents into the into the businesses. Well, what we've already done is uh, to postpone the deadlines for uh, licenses and we've also prorated their business and uh, liquor licenses uh, during the months that they were not able to perform. Okay. So we have been working throughout this year and now that the gaming has once again been shut down, uh, we will have to uh, delay the, uh, the yearly gaming license fees uh, to all the businesses that have gaming. So yes, uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, all of our businesses are struggling and we're doing everything we can up here in the front uh, to help them out. But any other suggestions from the board that would get a majority of the board to approve, I, I'm certainly listening. So I just want to confirm, are, is that the, um, the licenses for the gaming machines, are those all due in January? by January 1st at the same time the liquor licenses are due and the business licenses are due? No, business licenses are due um, May, May 1st. They come up, uh, right? Somebody help me out here? May 1st, yeah. May 1st, so. Uh, gaming, gaming and liquor is uh, January 1st. So we would be okay, saying that the business, business licenses are due May 1st also. I mean, January 1st aren't also. Am I, business licenses are due January 1st. I'm sorry. I'm Regular business licenses are due January 1st. You're, you're backwards on your dates. I'm sorry. I got it backwards, but yeah. So the liquor licenses are made. Correct. Right. Okay. So the liquor licenses and the gaming licenses are tied together with the same date. Correct. Oh. So we're, we're working very diligently up here to try to help all of our businesses. Uh, not shut them down for code violations and uh, things of the sort. Yeah, and I guess continue um, as much as we can on the website and on Facebook and just by word of mouth to shop locally. I mean, now more than ever, um, it, it's just so important. So it was just an idea I had because I, I know if, if on Friday, um, you know, more restrictions go in. And do we know, is the Illinois State, Ga is the Illinois Gaming Board going to come in and shut down all of the machines again? Yes. They are? Okay. Yeah. 11 o'clock Friday, I believe it is. For, for an undetermined amount of time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and who knows if we have more, if, if, if this is going to go even further. Okay, well, just something for us all to think about and continue to shop locally. The other thing I wanted to share with the board, uh, just as a, some information, um, last week I, I um, participated in South Suburban Mayors and Managers Transportation Committee meeting, and they shared that um, they're going to be rolling out a program which is going to be funded by the Cook County Department of Transportation and Highways called Fair Transit South Cook, and they're rolling it out. It has to be approved by Metro Pace and the Cook County Board, but I don't think there's going to be any op opposition where there's going to be a 50% reduction in fares on the Rock Island line and the um, the electric line. So that may help those who are using um, Metra. However, they went over the numbers, which are just devastating how much ridership is still down. So I do have a link to the program. If anybody's interested in that, I would be happy to share, but I wanted the board to be aware that that should be unfolding the beginning of 2021, and it is a three-year pilot program. Yeah, Karen, if you could share that with us, that would be great. So the idea is they're going to cut all fares for three years? That's the, that's the plan. Wow. And Cook County is going to fund it, so I'm thinking they probably have federal money to do that. That's kind of interesting, given the fact that I think most people, I think the, one of the reasons ridership is down is because um, companies are having their employees work from home, because most of the people that ride Metro Monday through Friday are people who work downtown. Exactly. And, and now, I mean, just listening to the governor again, he's encouraging everybody to let employers have their employees work from home if possible. So um, I, I don't know. I don't know. 
the reduction. Will, will increase ridership at all? I have no idea. But I wanted to share that with the board, and that's all I have. If you could share that link with us, that'd be great. I will. I will forward it. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, Trustee Evan, I was not able to be here. Uh, so, only thing on his agenda, or on his agenda was for the discussion of the general liability and workers' comp insurance. Basically, uh, I've, I've spoken with uh, Treasurer Britton and Trustee Ivan this week. Uh, they've, they've, uh, our, our insurance company has searched, Alliant Mesro has searched and searched and searched, and, and basically this is, this is the best that we're going to get. Uh, it's a terrible climate, a terrible market, and uh, th this is it. So, has anybody had a chance to look at it and have any questions or comments or... Um, I would just ask, this is usually something that we go over, like, in our finance committee meeting. Are we going to do that at the next finance committee meeting, Mayor? Uh, we could. We could. But... Uh, just because it's a lot of information, and, like, last year we went over to make sure our deductibles were correct. Am I in the right meeting? Is that the, We went over to make sure our deductibles were correct, and... That you are correct. Our, yes. our properties. And our properties and everything. Yeah, I'm uh, not sure if we're having a finance meeting scheduled anytime soon because of the condition we're in, but uh, we can certainly do that. Any, any, anyone else have any comments on what they've read so far? No, I, I agree with Sandy. I'd like to review this at a commit, uh, finance meeting also. Okay. Um, when does the village have to approve this? Uh, next month, December. Well, then I guess we better have a finance committee meeting. All right. We will work on that. And that was all he had on his agenda. Uh, Trustee Gillis? Um, I do not have anything to report. I do have a question, though, um, regarding the um, village hall being shut down. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, it's my understanding that it was deep cleaned last week. Um, Thursday, according to the email you sent, Mayor? To, yes. Um, yes. Um, I was just curious, and, and I'm not trying to upset anybody, but I, I was really taken back Monday when I went to drop off a water bill for my neighbor, and I know in the fire department, if we had people testing positive, we wouldn't have them in the village hall. Police department, public works, building department, what in God's name were we thinking when we had two employees that were tested positive working at the village hall on Monday? I was flabbergasted. I went in there just to drop off water bills and found out that there's two employees that were tested positive last week that came back that were still positive working in the village hall. Uh, well, I'm not aware of that. They should, be, they should be home. If you're sick, you stay home. All, all week. Well, there was two employees there, and whatever deep cleaning we did last week is no good because they were there Monday, and today's Wednesday, and that place is still contaminated. In my Jerry, opinion. Are, we, are we sure that they had that those were? I'm 110 percent sure. I asked them face to face, not face to face as far as distance as I could stay away from them. But yes, and they were within the office area, so I was just floored. So I think we need to redirect our employees to make sure they are well aware that there's no reason for them. That nobody's irreplaceable. Whatever they can do, we can have it done by somebody else that's healthy or wait till people get healthy. To subject people, I mean, I thought the village hall was closed. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone in there to drop off water bills for my neighbors. And to find them there, I was just totally awestruck and to the fact that why are we having people here who are positive coming to work? The direction has been uh, since March, and I have renewed it uh, several times that if you're sick, you stay home. So uh, I will look into that. Thank you, sir. I w Jerry, I wish that we would have known about this on Monday because I have an employee working there who's not sick, who's not positive. We've been in the village hall every day since last week. Well, if, if I wasn't sick myself, not from COVID, just sick, I probably would have been able to communicate better. But I didn't even get out of bed yesterday. 
but I still feel like crap today, and I'm hoping that I don't get exposed. But, I mean, just to put anybody else in risk is ridiculous. I agree. Well, we should have a policy that if, if you test positive, you cannot return to work until you have a negative test. I know some um, well, I don't think lawyers require two negative tests. You might want to you might want to check with the attorney because I don't think you can make people test, but you can make them quarantine for fourteen days, trustee. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, yeah. And as Gary just said, he's been telling people ever since last March: if you're sick, stay home, don't come to work. Not just telling people, <laughs> sending out memorandums. A, a policy is in place that if you're sick, you stay home. Yeah. Plus the the whether or not you have a fever of one hundred, I think it's one hundred point three. Whether you have symptoms, you should be staying home. We, we can do what we can to police what we can, but under HIPAA, you know, disclosing who's got a positive test and who doesn't, that's not something we're allowed to do either. So we have right, to and I'm not doing that. I'm just stating the fact that two employees were there that told me they <coughs> tested positive and that they were still um, positive, and I was shocked that they were there. So I, I would actually like like an investigation to find out who, who okayed them to come back to work, and if nobody okayed them, why they were even there. Because I don't like the fact that I was subject, building the pipe was subject, anybody that's there today is subject. I mean, this is this is something that should have been preventable. Thank you. Anything else? No, that's all. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Trustee Keeney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I do have several things to report. Um, I'm sure you, you, all of us have noticed that the purple building that's on Pulaski is no longer purple. It's been painted a lovely shade of tan, and that is because the building has been sold. The owner uh, currently um, owns a, a wig business. She sells wigs to um, individuals who are going through chemo treatment, and her intention is to uh, wait until next year to remodel the building and relocate her business here to town. Um, uh, the village has received, the building department has received plans for a Mexican restaurant to go in up on 147th Street at 3352, which is, I believe, it's in the um, building that was one of the land bank transactions from last year. Oh, yes, that is um, where uh, the uh the uh, hair salon is on one side, the old penny pinchers. Correct. Um, the building department has been receiving a lot of inquiries for the vacant gap of the Dollar Tree property. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the, some of the inquiries we've, we've, that have been received were for folks that wanted to put in a medical facility. Um, but given the state of the building, I don't know that that type of business would work very well there. Um, it would require a whole lot of a whole whole lot of update and, and work. So um, there have been a lot of inquiries on the Moran buildings. Um, the uh, small residential type commercial building on 147th Street. I don't know the address. I apologize. Um, next to like just due east of uh, Nana's Bakery. That building has been sold and 722. Thank you. And uh, there's been an application for a hair and nail salon. Fannie Mae has been sold. <coughs> be about that. It's been bought by a company called Take Five, and they are submitting plans for an oil change business. Um, the gentleman who is uh, trying to purchase the Honda building is still attempting to get a clean title. Uh, the issue we've been told is that there are two liens on the property that he's having some difficulty getting free. Um, I'm also really happy to report that we have construction on two new houses starting, one up at 151st in Kildare and a new home on Joseph Court. We've got a, a new Jamaican Jerk restaurant that is under construction in the Midlothian Plaza at 145th and Pulaski. Um, the building department has been moving full steam ahead with utilizing their new software. Everybody's been, everyone has been trained on using it. However, all of our entire staff still needs to continue with um, 
the more heavy duty training through uh, the company that we got the software from. But everybody's been using the software and getting comfortable with it, and it's been working pretty well. Um, the rain garden will be transformed for Christmas starting the end of this week. On Friday, the Christmas trees are arriving. Public Works as a um, we'll put the Christmas trees up for us and try to get lights on. And um, I'm inviting inviting and welcoming any and all volunteers who would like to try to come out and help us put a few decorations up on the trees. Um, public Works, like I said, we'll get the trees up and the lights on, and we we'll just need some assistance getting the rest of the decorations up. All the trees are socially distanced, and all the decorations will be brought and put in place. So if anybody is available, Friday or early next week to help with decorating, that would be great. This Friday, Kathy? Yes. Okay. In the afternoon. Um, I want to take advantage of the fact that the weather is supposed to be good. And at this point, there is, oh, there's a, a few items here that uh, Superintendent Weiner has recommended that the board consider going forward. Um, we need to amend our ordinance to specifically state that business license inspections are only performed for the owner of the business. We are, those inspections are not to be used as point of sale inspections. Uh, building department had been called out to do um, a business license inspection and when they got there and were halfway through realized that the potential buyer was using that as a point of sale, at which point then the inspection ended and he was told to go get his own private individual inspection. Um, we need to update some of our ordinances with regards to parking lot lighting um, and asphalt standards uh, and those donation collection boxes. You know those boxes that have been kind of those crappy, ugly looking boxes that have popped up all over town? Unbeknownst to everyone, nobody knows where they came from, nobody knows who dropped them off. We need to get um, one of those. Um, and that's all I have right now. Kathy, could I just interject um, for these businesses that are doing remodeling or renovations like the the uh, purple doctor's office, mm -hmm. make sure they apply to the CalSA uh, for enterprise zone status. It will save them substantial money. And if they need information, I'd be happy to provide it or put them in touch with Mary Schmidt. Okay. Well, um, I'll find out for I'll next week when we have more staff, and I'll try to get I'll get the person's contact information and get it over to you. I want them to be able to take advantage of whatever whatever opportunities we have right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Trustee Coley. Thanks tonight, Mayor. The first thing is I'd like to move to approve to, to approve the hiring of safety services and assessments to remediate the sidewalk trip hazards in the southwest quadrant of town at a cost not to exceed eleven thousand seven hundred and forty five dollars. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call please, Clerk Moscow. Trustee Killily. Aye. Trustee Crowley. Aye. Trustee Caveney. Aye. Trustee Gillis. Aye. Trustee Christ. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I know Trustee Ivan isn't here, but I'd just like to uh, thank the Beautification Committee for uh, spending uh, Last Saturday, I believe, uh, redoing the uh, flower boxes to uh, make them holiday-like. They did a beautiful job with the uh, branches and the ribbons. It looked very nice, so that's a, that's a great thing. And uh, also, they're going to be decorating the uh, village green to make that uh, in line, to make that Christmas-like on uh, November 28th. I believe it's at uh, 9 a.m., and if anybody wants to volunteer for that, I'm sure they won't turn them away. Uh, they have a lot, lot, uh, lot of things to do. They're going to put more lights on uh, everywhere and uh, make it uh, better than ever. So uh, if anybody wants to volunteer, it would be appreciated. And that's all I have there. Thank you, sir. Yesterday I saw them out there, uh, I think it was Saturday, right? 
Yeah, doing a good job. All right, uh, Trustee Crowley. Uh, thank you, sir. Just a couple things tonight. Um, first, um, last week I sent out an email and also put on board docs um, the uh, two memorandum, re memorandums of understanding that I'll be asking for approval. Um, these. Both of these have been sent to the attorney and the village board, and I haven't received any feedback. So I'd like to make a motion for the first one to approve the memorandum of understanding between the Midlothian Police Department and Trinity Services. Uh, this memorandum is for the grant that we received some time ago. Um, we will be working uh, in connection with Trinity Services Mental Health, and our officers will be receiving um, additional uh, training on uh, dealing with people with mental health uh, while in the course of their job. Is that a second? I'll second it. Right. Who was that? Mr. Killoley. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I just want to make sure that these have been reviewed by the attorney and that there are no legal issues, that they've been fully vetted. I, I sent them to the attorney and asked for uh, if there were any changes on the 13th. And did I you get any feedback? Look, I've, I've gotten no changes. Then it, can we safely assume there are no issues? I asked, I mean, I asked them to get back to me if there were any problems. Okay. So, yes, we're safe to assume. Any other thing? Any other discussion? We'll call this is a great thing. Much appreciated. Thank you, uh, Police Department. Yeah, it was really, it's a, it's a great grant. It's really going to give them a lot of additional training and resources when it comes to dealing with situations. Thank you, sir. Uh, roll call, please, Court in Moscow. Trustee Crowley. Aye. Trustee Killily. Aye. Trustee Kimmy. Aye. Trustee Gillis. Aye. Trustee Kreis. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, second, I will be. Uh, I would make a motion to approve the second memorandum of, of understanding um, <clears throat> for EMA services. Uh, this is a memorandum of understanding with multiple jurisdictions where we can share, where the police department can share um, resources when it comes to emer emergency management. Um, this also has been sent to the board and was also sent to the attorney for review, and no one had any changes. I'll make you make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Clerk Moscow. Trustee Crowley? Aye. Trustee Kaney? Aye. Trustee Gillis? Aye. Trustee Killily? Aye. Trustee Christ? Aye. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, next on my agenda, just a couple more uh, updates. Um, one, I wanted to remind everybody that the Community Policing Committee is in full swing with their toy drive this year. Um, there are boxes at multiple locations throughout the village, um, and they will be collecting until December 12th. Um, if anybody has any questions or they uh, are uncomfortable with donations, they can certainly contact me or the CPC. Um, make arrangements for uh, a drop-off time or pickup. Uh, also, um, I wanted to say that uh, Proven has uh, successfully switched all of our physical servers to the virtual server. This was done about five weeks ago, um, and they have had no reported problems so they will be shutting off our old servers um, we'll be recycling those servers and there's a couple projects that i think we'll um, be able to use them for i'm sure trustee caveney and trustee christ will be happy to reuse these um, and we won't have to discard them and finally wait sandy could i ask a quick question I was in the village hall about a week, week and a half ago, and I was having trouble getting onto the village common and the village shared server. I saw that email. Um, have anything to do with our new virtual servers? I asked them, and no, everything's been mapped, and nobody, I mean, there's been no reported problems with the mapping. 
but okay. I just wanted to make sure that before all, everything got shut down, if there have been trustees who've not been in the village hall lately because of COVID to look at, you know, to log on and to check to make sure that they didn't have the same. Well, this, we shut it off. It was, it was, it's, this has been going on for six weeks. So I'm assuming most people have had that opportunity, especially the workers. I mean, the, there, there would be nothing on those servers that we would shut down that we don't now have on the virtual server. So it's not like, it, you know, if there's a mapping issue or something winds up coming up obscure later, it's, it hasn't been deleted. We haven't stopped having those things. They're just running on a different server. Okay. Kathy, I had the same issue. Um, probably two weeks ago, I couldn't get into the comments. And did you call Proven? No, I didn't. Did you have that problem since? I... Probably, if it's probably, not, yeah. I had to call Proven, and he had to remap, remap okay. my whatever. He had to do okay. something. Yeah. So if there's a if there's a problem and, and something wasn't connect isn't connected right, then you have to call Proven. I mean, gonna, okay, I'll send him an email. But once you shut down the old servers, that's not going to interfere with it, Karen. No, no, we're not running any of those. We're not running any of those um, drop drives is what I think they're called. We're not running any of those drives still. On, it, they've all been copied to the new server. Okay. Um, and last and not least, uh, not last but not least, um, I just want to extend a heartfelt thank you to the police department. Um, last Saturday, they ha held their first youth academy. Um, they kept it small because they wanted to make sure that, you know, they had enough material and being the first they worked with the restorative justice program from Bremen High School and they had I believe eight student eight older teens participate it was a great day I mean the the participation from the police department and from the students it was really amazing to sit back and watch it um, they are planning another one um, and they'll be working with high school students again to have uh, another group come in in March but um, Mayor, wouldn't you agree? It was just, it was an amazing day. There was, a, it, it was nonstop all day. Um, there were, there were tears, there were laughter, there were <laughs> just about everything. It was really, um, really an amazing day. So I was very proud to, to be able to be a part of that. And um, I'm looking forward to the next one. It, uh, it, it's very, uh uh, important that these uh, youth get involved in these kinds of things. Uh, we're going to need them uh, in the future. And uh, our police department did a phenomenal job putting together a full slate of um, entertainment uh, from all the different jurisdictions. It was phenomenal. There was... Um there were so many questions and so much interaction that they well they ran well over their a lot of, it was an entire day i think they ran over by like 60 minutes um and i know when um a lot of the teams were leaving and, and getting ready they were you know we could hear them kind of talking and they were all really excited about it and um it was just it was a really fantastic program yeah. thank you so much today that's all I have, sir. Uh, Attorney Murphy, do you have anything for us tonight? Attorney, you might be on mute. Sorry, I was. Yes, I have no report this evening unless uh, the board has a question. There's no report from the attorney. Thank you, sir. Uh, the only thing on my agenda tonight is the, uh, I talked about it last week briefly before the non-meeting. Uh, Ambiance Mivalti and the Oro Hotel over on Cicero is looking for a renewal to their Class A property tax incentive. I did not hear any feedback from the board. Um, I will say that they bring in quite a bit of revenue to the Mivalti uh, annually. And while we typically reserve uh, these types of incentives to people that are reinvesting in their property as far as redevelopment and job creation uh, their property is not in, in need of that it's a beautiful property uh, but they are as i said before uh, going to increase their marketing campaign to try to increase their numbers of members and visits so uh, seeing as i saw her no uh, feedback from the board i'll be putting the paperwork together to 
get this on the agenda and a future date uh, for approval. And that's Mayor, I think we need Mayor, I think we need more information though. I think I know we get a yearly report from them, and that's how we figure what uh, rebate we get from from them, and uh, that would show their revenues. And I think in contrast to that. Uh, maybe over the past five years too, like you have, uh, that we show their uh, real estate taxes. Because I'm pretty sure the real estate taxes have gone up uh, dramatically. I think that would give the board um, a lot better idea of what's going on with their business, uh, so that it would, you know, it could support uh, could support their request, or the board might say no. But I think we do need that information. To really make an uh, informed decision. Exactly the information I was asking for, and I got nothing. So thank you. Uh, well, well, if I could just bring it up, I did go to the um, Cook County Tax Portal. 2015, they paid 115,241,000 in property taxes. 2016, it was 117,927. 2017, 86,245. 2018, 111,862. And in 2019, 114,145 dollars, if those numbers are correct. And I would think that since I got them right off the Cook County Tax Portal, they should be pretty accurate. So they are paying a substantial amount of money in property taxes. Even having the Class A currently. And they're paying all, uh, trust, uh, Clerk Moscow, what we were looking at the other day is Roughly 100000 a year to bring it in and as far as extra revenue? Yeah, we've been getting close to $100,000 a year. And I have almost every year that Trustee Christ mentioned, but in 2016, the village got $115,000 of tax revenue. In 2017, we got $90,000. In 2018, we got $94,000. In 2019, we got $93,000. And in 2020, we received $97,000. So... I believe that was part of the board packet two weeks ago. It was. Yeah, it's yes, it's also on board docs. Okay. So, Trustee Kilby, is there any other information you need? Well, just the uh, just the uh, revenues. Well, it's you got it. So you know, I know I know what our share of it is. Well, what that what that means as far as revenues, I know I should be able to figure that out. But it would be good if we had those. Two figures side by side, and I—I I don't know when Ambiance really. What Ambiance started in 2000? Our, our revenue sharing started in 2008, 2009, and I wonder what their real estate taxes were back then. Uh, excellent. So that, that's really that's really what they're basing it off of what they could what they could give us, but that would be helpful information just to see what's happened to them over the years and uh, again again that would be helpful to make the decision because they started out with so much real estate taxes back then and now seeing what's happened to them now would be a good contrast to see um, what what's happening to them as far as their costs increased cost as opposed to their revenues are apparently are sort of their Revenues, according to this, are fairly flat. So, you know, I think that's a good, it's good information to contrast each other to help the board. So, did didn't they get to class eight before they opened, uh, as an incentive to open there? Uh, Trustee Christ, help. Our tax sharing agreement is tied to their room revenues, not their property taxes. That's what the document that you sent us. Oh, I know. It's yeah. It's a it's a it's a room revenue that they're getting a rebate off of. But it's just you know knowing that their costs, what their costs have done over the years, their revenues have been sort of flat. But you know, the, it, I I would just guess that their real estate taxes have gone up from 2009 fairly fairly substantially, and so that would give the board a better picture of what uh, what they're doing. So you want to you want to know what what it would what their property taxes would have been if they did not currently have a class eight? I don't know. Do they have a class eight? They do. They do have a class eight. Okay, but does, okay, but I mean over, overall, let's see. So they still have a class eight right now. It's expiring. It's going to expire. 
So, Don, I think what you're asking for is you want, and I don't know how to get that information, you would like Frank Sutrell to provide, or whoever, his CFO, to provide the, proper, the property taxes from 2008 or 2009 going forward, correct? Yes, yes, and, and of course, what, when, it, when it runs out, what would the when it runs out, which will probably be next year, what will it, what projected it will be? Okay, can I just, can I just ask a question here? So the village gave this business a class eight, which basically gives them a pretty hefty discount on their real estate tax. My understanding is their real estate taxes aren't cut by 50%, but their um, uh, assessment. assessment, thank you. Their assessed value right. cut in half, and then their tax right. on that discounted assessed value, okay? So they're getting a discounted right. real estate tax, but then on the other hand, we have a sales tax sharing agreement with them that provides the village with this sales tax revenue. Yes. Above and beyond, well, it's a real, it's a, it's a real estate, it's a sales tax sharing. So the village is still getting whatever, whatever sales tax we have out there as a village. When their customers go in and use their facility, whatever sales tax they're paying there, the village is getting that. Plus, they're sharing with us. They're they're giving us more sales tax revenue. So and I'm consistent. Like it, it seems, you know, it seems it's been right around that hundred thousand dollar mark every year. From what we, I mean, give or take. So I mean, wouldn't that if if that was a sh a sales tax sharing, wouldn't that give us the information that their income is, their revenue is staying about the same if they're paying about the same? Right. Well, it's just it's just a good it's just a good idea to know what they actually take in in revenue. How would that be reflected in real estate taxes? Pardon me? No, not real estate taxes. That's reflective of their revenue. But I'm just saying, you know, their revenues have been sort of flat, but I'll bet you that their real estate taxes, even with uh, even with the Class 8, has gone up. And then you can project also for next year, if, if their real estate taxes are so much right now, you can project that they, if they lose their class A right now, how much their real estate taxes will go up, which I'm surprised, I'm surprised they didn't tell us, honestly. All right. Maybe, maybe they know. I'm pretty sure they have a pretty good idea how much it's going to be next year if the class A runs up. But if they're getting reassessed, Dan, we're all getting reassessed. If they're getting reassessed, maybe they don't know because they don't know what the assessment is yet. I, I will do the best I can to get... <laughs> Some information that you're requesting, Trusty Cody. All right. Uh, I, think, I think so. Charles would know a lot, lot more about this than we, than we do. I'm pretty sure they already know. I'm sure he knows a lot they more. Than than we, yeah. I'm sure he knows a lot more than we know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, Clerk Moscow, do you have anything? I have nothing to make, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, seeing as no further business comes the board, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, meeting adjourned, but let me, before everyone goes, uh, just keep in mind that next week is our annual uh, Thanksgiving Eve board meeting, so I appreciate it uh, uh, out of respect for anyone that has Thanksgiving Eve's plans or Thanksgiving morning plans. I don't know what that looks like this year, but uh, let's please have an abbreviated meeting. All right? Oh, sir, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Good you. Night. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night, everyone. Stay, stay healthy. Good night.